Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've painted some stones like this in the past and had them in some of my sketchbook tours and I got a lot of compliments on them and somebody even suggested doing a tutorial for how I paint these. So that's what this is going to be today, a tutorial on how to paint rune stones. Now I'm not going to explain the meaning of every single rune. It depends if you're using the Elder Futhark runes or if you're using Anglo-Saxon runes. They're very similar. You could also be trying to make some stones that spell something in Tolkien's uh, Dwarvish language. Or you could be doing something with just regular um, Roman letters or little symbols. So I'm going to show you how to paint two rune stones in real time here. Um, but here's a page that I just did to show you. So we have some runes over here, a letter M over here, which kind of looks like an M&M, &M, which is a bit funny, but <laughs> we have an infinity symbol and a couple of stones uh, that just have some, some markings on them. So I'm going to be using over here this color, which is by Stone Ground Paint Co., and it's called Armenian Purple Ochre. I'm also using a large round brush. This is a Simply Simmons number no. 8, and some clean water. The paper is SMLT Arts Watercolor Authentic Book, but you can use whatever you want. Um, this technique works well with a paper that holds on to the pigment well enough because we're going to do a bit of glazing. So to start off what you're going to do is get a sort of light or medium version of the color you're using. You can use multiple colors for this but I find it works really well using just one paint. Um, it has a nice effect. You want a sort of medium watery version of it and you're just going to paint your stone shapes and they can be any shape at all. Uh, you can base this on some real rocks you have or you can just make it up. So there's the first shape. It doesn't have to be that filled out yet. And there's my second shape. And while that's still wet, what you want to do is get a little more pigment and just put it along the shadow side of the shape. Wherever your light's coming from, you want to put it on the opposite side so that you start getting a bit of a shadow. And while this dries, it's going to bleed out into your base color and it'll look nice and soft. Once you're done that step, let it dry completely. Now, when that's dry, the next step is to take a darker shade of your chosen color and paint in whatever shape or a letter or rune you want on your stone. So on this top one here, I'm gonna do the rune Feu or Feo, uh, which is a rune that symbolizes wealth or success or large amounts of cattle. <laughs> So you just want to block it in with a fairly solid little wash and try to keep it a little bit lighter than the darkest mass tone you can get from your paint. So if you find it's getting a little bit dark, you can lift up a little bit of it. And so you're looking for something kind of like that. On the second stone, uh, I'm going to do something more neutral and just do a cute little heart shape. All right, so while those sections are drying, we're going to define the shadow around the edge of the stone a little bit more. Um, you can do this while your letter or rune is drying. Just be careful not to touch the edge of the rune. You see how I'm just going around it there? That'll help with the illusion of having the rune carved into it. So you just want to get some pigment into there, get that shadow side darker, and then let that dry like that. 
Obviously we already did some shadow on that during the first wash, but this will just help darken it down and give the illusion of this being an actual pebble. All right, so now you're gonna let these two parts dry. The next steps are the ones that really sell it, so hit play when you're ready to move on. Okay, when that is dry, you're going to get, again, a dark version of the color you're using. You want to get the, the mass tone of the color, so the purest form of the pigment, the darkest version of it. And we're going to give your symbol or your rune a little drop shadow along the inside so that it looks like it's been carved into the stone. See, like that. And we'll do that on the rune up here too. Just like that. So now they look like they're carved into the stone. And the next, the next bit is I think the most, the most important bit. So you wanna really water down your paint and just get a really thin, thin amount of it. You can see what I'm doing over here. Just really thinning it down. You don't need very much pigment in there, but you still want, you still want some. So what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna go in and keeping a clear spot just around the symbol, you're gonna make a glaze that covers most of this, the pebble. But you can see how I'm not touching the symbol that you've put down. You're leaving a white well, it's not white, but you're leaving a color around it that's just the base color of the stone. And then this is just gonna really solidify that illusion of it being a real carved runestone. And if you find it's a bit much, you can always lift off some of this final wash like I just did there. We're going to go up here and do the same thing to this room. Let's get right in there, right around it. I'm going to show you one final thing, which is how I do a drop shadow on these, um, just to make it sort of pop from the page if you want to. Obviously, you don't have to. Um, so I'm going to take a really dark color. In this case, I'm using an Indigo Genuine. And I'm just going to draw a very thin line around the bottom edge of the stone where you want your shadow to be. Like that. And then this is very important. I'm going to wash my brush entirely, get all the pigment off of there, and then with a damp brush, I'm going to brush along the edge of that shadowy line with clean water so that it bleeds out like that. So that's a really quick technique to make a drop shadow. I'll show you one more time on this other rune here just so that you really see how it can look. You're gonna get a dark line around the edge where you want the shadow. You're going to get some clean water and brush along the edge so it feathers out. And you can touch it a few times if it uh, needs a little more pigment or if you're not happy with it or anything like that.
and there it is. That is how I paint runestones. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial. Tag me on Instagram at thoughtsupnorth if you try this out on your own and have something to show me. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!